morning. Welcome to the press conference for the 2017 annual meeting of the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. I'm Robin Cohen. I'm the chair of the workforce for media relations and communication. I'm pleased to present three very interesting and provoking uh, presentations this morning. The first one is entitled Two-Year Echocardiographic and Clinical Outcomes in 937 Intermediate Patients Undergoing Surgical Aortic Valve Replacement from the Partner 2A Study, and it'll be, pre pre uh, it'll be given by Dr. Vinod Thirani from Emory University. Vinod. Thank you so much, Dr. Cohen. So this is on behalf of the Partner Trial Investigators and the Publication co uh, Committee. Uh, I do have uh, disclosures uh, for Edwards Life Sciences as a consultant and also uh, research uh, to the university, not to me. So really the objectives of this was to evaluate the early and the two-year outcomes of 937 intermediate risk patients who underwent surgical valve implantation as part of the Partner 2A randomized trial. The main objectives were to describe operative mortality and hospital morbidities compared with STS benchmarking, benchmarks, uh, describe time-related mortality and stroke, including uh, preoperative predictors for outcomes, evaluate the effect of concomitant procedures on mortality and hospital morbidities, and evaluate longitudinal valve performance up to two years following surgical valve replacement. From 2011 to 2013, 2,000 patients with severe uh, AS were deemed intermediate risk. That's an STS predictive score of from four to eight by a heart team uh, in a conference call uh, adjudicated and uh, accepted, and they were randomized one-to-one -one with TAVR with a Sapien XT valve, that's a second generation balloon expandable valve, or SAVR uh, at 57 centers. In the study, really 937 patients had an aortic valve implanted, and they're called the as-treated cohort uh, for this study. So as you can see, the average uh, age was 82, so these patients, even though they were intermediate risk, were above the age of uh, 80. 45% uh, were female, and the STS score was 5.8. Uh, you can see a quarter of these patients had a prior coronary bypass surgery, 10% had a previous stroke, and 12% had previous pacemaker placement. When you look at COPD, you can see that 10% of them were oxygen dependent going into the operating room. So 85% of these patients had a full sternotomy, and 15% of the patients had a mini sternotomy. Isolated valves were done in almost 80% of patients, 15% of the patients had AVR plus coronary bypass surgery, and 6% of patients had AVR plus another concomitant type of procedure, but not coronary bypass <coughs> surgery. For isolated AVRs, the cardiopulmonary bypass time was 98 minutes, and as you can see, the isolated AVR cross clamp time was 69 minutes. By the way, that's below the national average that we published previously from the STS database, which is uh, roughly 78 minutes. And when you added a concomitant procedure, the bypass time obviously went up to 129 minutes, and the cross clamp time went up to 95 minutes. So in outcomes, you can see that the uh, uh, entire cohort, which is 937 patients, and then you can see the isolated uh, AVR, uh, which is uh, in the uh, far right-hand two columns. Um, you can see the all-cause mortality was 4.1%. Uh, isolated AVR was 4.2%. Uh, AVR plus cabbage plus other was 2.9% and AVR plus other was 5%. When you come down, you'll see uh, the stroke was 5.4%. Uh, in a hospital, uh, deep wound sternal infection was 0.8%. Um, what I do want to show you, I'm not sure this pointer is working. I can use the mouse. Um, what I do want to show you is this is the OD ratio compared to the STS national standards. And you can see here for the overall cohort of 4.1, this was below what the STS predicted. So you can see that we did better than what the STS predicted. However, you can see that when the stroke, it was higher than what the STS predicted, and as was deep sternal wound infections. <clears throat> when you look at uh, mortality by a surgical group for procedures, first of all, I want to note to you that the y-axis is uh, at 25% uh, mortality, not 100% mortality. So the curves do look a little bit uh, different, but quite honestly, uh, you're looking at a 10 to 20% range here. So between um, those patients who had AVR plus other, AVR plus cabbage, were, and also isolated AVR, you can see that there was no statistical difference between the three uh, groups at two years. And this is the 30-day mortality, the one-year mortality, and you can see here uh, a two-year mortality with 17% for the isolated AVR and 21% for the AVR plus other. When you look at the mortality by patient uh, prosthesis mismatch, that's something that we've talked about is what size valve was put in. in 
reference to the weight in the uh, body surface area of the patient, you can see that those patients who had none or mild PPM, patient prosthesis mismatch, moderate mismatch, or severe mismatch, did not have a, a statistical significant difference between the three uh, groups. When you look at surgical uh, stroke uh, after the procedure, this is in hospital stroke, you can see, or stroke over time, you can see that those patients really had somewhat similar stroke rate at this time period and at the end of two years. It was also non-significant having a stroke uh, for these patients. And here's the final rate at two years, 12% uh, for isolated AVR, 11% plus AVR plus other, and 8.2% uh, for AVR plus corneal bypass surgery. The mean gradients, when we look at the echocardiogra uh, echocardiography, you can see that over the time period, this is the uh, free discharge echo and then the two-year echo, you can see that there's really no degradation of valve, structural valve deterioration uh, during that time period. So in conclusion, operative mortality in SAVR patients in the Partner 2A trial was 4.1%, somewhat lower than the STS expected rate of mortality. The time-related events demonstrate a period of high, high early mortality, but followed by more constant risk over the next two years. In-hospital stroke was 5.0% for all patients and twice what was expected. However, this is also due secondary to the neurologic assessment of for all of these patients postoperatively in the STS criteria, or when we look at historic data, there is no neurologic uh, um, uh, uh, assessment at all. So we expect uh, a higher stroke rate in these patients. Uh, minimally invasive AVR does not result in increased mortality or stroke compared to full sternotomy. 33% of patients had severe patient prosthesis mismatch, but only uh, as we follow them to two years, there's a similar survival at that time for those patients who had severe PPM versus those who did not. And echocardiogra echocardiographic data showed an improvement in mean gradient ejection fraction aortic valve area compared to baseline with no degradation uh, thus far. From this adjudicated, uh, prospectively collected data in the contemporary era, SAVR can be performed in intermediate risk elderly patients with mortality commiserate with the national benchmarks. Continued surveillance to these patients remains extremely important. Thank you very much. Can you explain a little bit about why this data is important? Um, does it mean that the surgical results are better than we thought? Does it mean that the STS database isn't as accurate as we had anticipated? Um, does it mean that the bar against which TAVR is measured should go up or down? How should this data be interpreted in the milieu of the SAVR versus TAVR controversy? That's a very good question, Dr. Cohen. So I will tell you that this shows us that in 57 selected sites uh, in heart valve centers where cardiologists and surgeons have seen the patients together and made, um, and a committee has adjudicated the proper therapy and, and uh, has agreed to randomization, that you can have excellent results. I mean, we have <laughs> a better result than what the STS predicted, uh, looking at all of these variables. Uh, I think the STS continues in being on some of the committees for the database. <laughs> we continue <clears throat> to update how we do the STS algorithms and calculations, and these will, I'm sure, be recalculated, but we're showing that what the STS, when you, from a cardiologist or somebody looks at the STS national database in certain hands, yes, the, the outcomes are better in mortality than what are being predicted. Um, I think in relation to TAVR, I think this is very important. Um, I think that uh, patients, you know, on the lower spectrum of the, uh, the let's say the four to three percent, uh, maybe those patients should be heading towards uh, surgical valve therapy, but those patients who are on the higher spectrum of intermediate risk, the sevens and the eights will maybe go a little bit more towards TAVR as a possibility. Uh, what may occur also based on some of this data. So it will be interesting to see how that plays out. The bottom line being that in patients who end up with surgical aortic valve replacement, they can expect an excellent result. Absolutely. They can, they can uh, expect excellent results. You can expect great uh, valve performance. And we're seeing really no degradation right now or structural valve deterioration. Um, what's also important, that this is a very heavily scrut uh, scrutinized group of patients. We're following them very carefully. We're measuring them very carefully, and that's what's important about this study. Instead of a retrospective study we see from a single site and different operators looking at everything, our echocardiograms are reviewed by a consortium of echo specialists at a separate site, independent site. There are all of their testing is done neurologically, and so it's a really heavily um, investigated group of patients, and that's what makes this study so important. <laughs>
there was a blank spot um, for off-cause operative mortality for isolated AVR. Is that, what was the reason for that? Yeah, I'm not, I'm, quite honestly, I'm not sure it should be there. The data is there. I just don't know why it's not on the slide. But I'll tell you what it did show. It showed basically no difference, uh, no decrease. Uh, it, it, it showed results which were very similar to those in all patients. So isolated AVR, when you looked at the overall mortality, was very uh, was below SDS predicted risk mortality, and I, I have that data actually, but I can I can give that to you later. I don't know why it didn't show up on the slide, but okay. we have that data. Okay. Yeah. And then um, my other question was, how does this particular presentation differ from some of the two-year data that we've seen presented at like the AHA and other meetings? Like, what's specifically new about this presentation? Yeah, so uh, obviously this is a shorter version of what's really being presented uh, later today. And what we did is a really deep dive in the, into the concomitant procedures. We're doing now for a good analysis on minimally invasive versus non-minimally invasive, um, the different valve types, uh, the PPM, uh, and some of the data, again, that will be shown later is the, the size 21, the size 23, size 25. What are the differences over two-year mortality for those patients? So it's really a much... If you look at Dr. Leon's publication, New England Journal of Medicine, none of that's really, uh, we have a deep dive into it, even concomitant procedures. In stroke, we never really looked at minimally invasive versus not. Those are questions that are very relevant for surgeons and also for patients who are asking themselves, is one procedure better than the other? So it's a truly deep dive instead of just a glance uh, of um, the 937 patients. Thank you. I know we have people who have called in on the phone who I'm sorry? Why would you just have a uh, Well, right now, uh, a couple of things come up. I think that. And I are, and in the media Yeah, so right now, as you know, um, when we looked at all the randomized trials, there's non inferiority of TAVR to surgical valve replacement. And when it comes to looking at long term data, we have more long term data with surgical valves than we do transcatheter valves. If you look at high-risk patients, surgical valves and TAVR valves have actual, at five years, have equivalent mortality curve. So there is no difference in mortality uh, between even intermediate risk when you look at all patients and uh, that's been published in New England Journal of Medicine in the Lancet paper that was published in five years of high risk. Uh, it is a true tried uh, procedure, surgical valve replacement. We're seeing very little uh, degradation in the valve um, when you look at long-term results. And this is just two years, but we'll continue to follow these patients. I think that uh, when you look at PV leak rate, I didn't show you that data, it's less than 1%. It's uh, almost 0.6% of moderate severe PV leak rate, which again, as we have seen previously, PV leak rates are higher in transcatheter valve therapy. So there's a variety of reasons why, why surgical valve replacement can be still a gold standard in some patients. But again, I think it depends on the STS scores, right? If you're, uh, and that's why we're doing low risk trials. If a uh, transcatheter valve was the, was the ultimate decision on what to do, then FDA wouldn't mandate a low-risk trial, and they wouldn't have mandated a medium-risk trial. I think the other answer also has to do with the SDS score alone isn't going to be enough. I mean, one of the biggest issues in SABR versus TAVR is going to be durability. So if you have, for instance, a intermediate-risk patient who's young, and we don't know the durability of TAVR yet, that might be a patient who's going to be better off with SABR than TAVR. So I think that we need yeah. to flush out the data a little more specifically instead of just relying on a percentile score from the SDS to answer some of the questions that are going to be really important in the future. So far, most of the studies have been in patients who have been in their 80s. Even this study was an 82-year uh, mean age of 82. So once we start studying this in 60s and 70-year-olds, it'll be quite interesting to see what the data is going to show us.